All right, we are here for episode 10 of the challenge series. Just a couple episodes away now from the quarterfinals. Quarterly finals, I guess. It's not really quarterfinals on a tournament, it's just quarter of a calendar year, 12 weeks. Um, you know, obviously allowing for a month for people to actually like live their life. Um, but yeah, so episode 10 is, it has, is arrived. English, please. Um, you can actually see in this little opening bit here, you've got three, uh, three vehicles with redesigns going on. Uh, first we have Maserati's, or Maki's Maserati, which, uh, she's added some quite a bit of gold accents to the car. He just got a couple new sponsors later. Yeah, I don't think Mobile One or BC Racing around the car before either. Uh, then we have top left of James Stillwell, who has had quite a radical change in design, while Maki just added a few accents. The entire color scheme of the GTR has changed entirely. It's gone from just a simple matte black with some red accents. Now it's a black and red gradient and white accents. And then the last of the three here, re redesigned cars, is um, Akira Taniguchi got a bit of a wide body upgrade. And that came with the new design for the car as well. A little more, not complex design, but there's a little more to it. More intricate, that's the word I'm looking for. Still got the trademark things that were a part of the previous livery. The two, uh, the two hood stripes, the angel typeface, but now it also looks like an actual race car too, instead of just plastering a giant Castro logo on the side of the car. Anyway, let's uh, not waste any more time here, let's just head into round one. We've arrived at the first race of the episode, and it is a 600 category race here at Brands Hatch. The camera, the camera car today is Ivan Silvakov and his SEL. How he got his hands on this thing, I don't know, but there's quite a, there's a few cars in the series that are kind of like that. How did you get this? Like, this isn't the kind of car you just find lying around, you know? He kind of muscles JJ West ahead of, or muscles ahead of JJ West. Just muscle him ahead of him, that doesn't make any sense. Wrong camera. Got the engine note of this car. This thing sounds intimidating, to say the least. Passing a branch hatch, in my experience, isn't super easy. But Sotokov isn't really, doesn't seem to be having too many problems at the moment shoots on the outside of Scott Weber. Weber almost almost uses him up a little bit there. Ahead of the 2000 GT. That's another one. How did Nico, of all people, get her hands on an old relic of a Japanese sports car? I don't know. Risa giving Ivan absolutely zero real estate. He returns the favor on the exit of the same turn. A high advertisement. And one overtake. And on the corner exit, probably, yep, two overtakes. Put your hands on the wheel. I don't understand why they haven't fixed that yet. Like, that's just the bug in the game. The driver just never seems to have his hands on the, on the wheel. From the side of when I was driving this car, I actually expected it to be an absolute nightmare of a car to handle. This little 1971 Mercedes boat has a lot of grip, and it makes no sense. Daytona! That's a shot. 
it's not quite... Can't get the move there, be able to instead cross over Hanamura. And now, the pass is made. Hanamura actually gets into Ivan still, but it doesn't matter. Next to Schwartz. The, uh, the outside there? Yeah, wishful thinking, I would say. But next corner inside makes a heck of a lot more sense. Only two more passes to make. We're only crossing the halfway mark of this race, and Ivan's already not far from the lead. And there's there's one. Can't get ahead of the polo, so we have to slot in through the first turn. Big corner exit. How aggressive on the brakes does he get? Not aggressive enough. But what about the exit speed? You know, slow in, fast out, and all that. Down the inside. I think Hanyo missed the corner a tiny bit, reacting to Ivan and new leader. And just over two laps. Last to first challenge. Okay, so like, what is with the assists here? Like, is, am, I, am I the only one noticing that? I mean, obviously you see mine are all off, but like... The AI have assists turned on and it like actually affects their handling, but sometimes the AI just turn them off. My dad doesn't have active stability control on, but... Most other people do. I didn't really think that would be on a car-by-car -car basis. The only other one that has it off is, uh... Is, it's, uh, Idol versus Idol. Again, we're getting a rematch from Lake Maggiore. 2000 GT's got two more horsepower for Risei, though, and we'll pull ahead. The only other car that has it turned off is Andreas Vitalis and Delta. I think I saw it randomly turn off with Hernandez going through one. Yeah, it clicked off there for... Cosmos car too. Is it on or not? And why do they even need it? They're AI. They're crying out loud. I don't get it. And JJ fancies a dive. Trying to make some final lap magic work here. And he got it. That was pretty smooth. That's not exactly the best passing zone on the track either. So we wait on the brakes. Can we get another pass in right before the last gasp? Yes, possibly. Yep. Cuts them off and finishes the pass. N Nico also got ahead of uh, Scott Weber. Dad looking for a last second move, but he can't break late enough. And a commanding victory for Sotokov Brands Hatch. Here in his old Mercedes race car. And Dad couldn't find a way around the polo. And, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, another day at the office for Mr. Sotokov. Oh, that's the track. I'm like, this car's not British. This car's German. No, but Brands Hatches. Um, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not. And even if we were to pretend that I was just actually just straight up Ivan, he's not either. That confused me. Anyway. On to race two. We're here for race two. As I had a brain fart in the middle of starting to say that. And that's gonna be a mess. 
It's uh, a thousand chains as the uh, driver of the day, and she's already set to moving somebody out of the way. It takes a lot of weight to punt a pickup truck, but somehow, I'm pretty sure Allison Chains has literally taken zero weight out of that Dodge Challenger. I think actually, if you remember it, she actually added weight to it through a ballast to make it a 640 car. When in reality, this thing could be close to 700 if it wanted to be. Not quite 730, but easily 675. And a bit of a nudge on Akira. I feel like it kind of gets off easy. I feel like it's worth reminding you that uh, obviously we've seen Akira getting his uh, wide body upgrade to his Supra. Uh, that came while he was busy working on remedying the uh, tampering with his car that apparently was candidly revealed as, you know, guilty as charged by Allison herself. Oh, she admits it, I guess. I don't, I don't know if that's really puts her on any sort of moral high ground that she admitted to screwing somebody over. And even though I attempted to, you know, like I sort of petitioned for some sort of penalty for that, but we don't have a penalty system in the challenge series because it's never been a problem. And I just move Riley out of the way, squeeze Thomas into the grass, almost do the same to Barbara. That's not at all where the car is. I don't, what, what is that camera? Yeah, another bump to the Corvette. Down the main street. And it gives Tyler a big tag, he does well to keep the car on the road with that, considering how unstable an old muscle car like that's gonna be. Oh no. Oh, good lord, that's not even who I expected. She didn't want after the- I didn't expect her to go after that guy. This sends DePrisco to Narnia. I'm- Oops. Uh, good thing I remembered the time. Uh, I'm a little further back than that, but... Um, yeah, just decides to stop braking, sends DeFrisco off into the first corner. Not the best camera angle, but I mean, at least you get the idea, I suppose. But yeah, so Akira only really made the wide body upgrade in the process of undoing. I don't remember what he told me that she messed with, but he, she messed with something. And in the middle of fifteen, he decided, well, let's do more than just repair it. Let's overhaul the thing. And we'll see where that's getting him. Down in... 16th, looking for 15th. Yellow flag. Oh, duh, right. Allison Change was behind the Mustang. And why did I not expect elsewhere? Or otherwise. Elsewhere? What? 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 Riker? And, uh, yep, that's, uh, that's, yep, all right, see you later. Another one off the list. Meanwhile, at the exact same time, an unrelated incident for, uh, John Garrison and the C2 vet. Just, uh, weight transfer. He wasn't even on the gas that much or anything. The car just decided, I'm done. So we had a double incident there. That was still quite a mess. Oh god, there's another Mustang. I say this like Allison would hit it out of the way if it was anything else, but... You know, it, usually the Mustangs get worse. Yep, see you later. Oh, karma. That was intentional too. Probably would have made the pass normally 
very easily by just going down the inside, but she turned right going into the left-hander. The so zombie's showing a bit of nerve too. That's a blade. These, these little, these little idle girls. You expect them to have, you know, f you know, they expect them to be fragile little things, but they've had more assertion than anybody else. It seems like Nico is the only person that I have heard of that stood up to Allison and not only lived but also got one over on her. Doesn't actually waste her time with Hanamura. Hanamura actually tries to go for a bit of justice there, but uh, I don't really think so. Be wise to stay out of this, Cosma. Oh no. Oh yeah, it just gives the Porsche a big nudge, but ultimately, compared to the two Mustangs she's passed up to this point, has had it easy. Oh god, there's another Mustang. <laughs> I'm not sure why three Mustangs entered the race. Uh, well, actually, no. The three Mustangs may have entered the race before Allison arrived. And also, yes, this is a 640-675 category mix. I don't know if that was already plainly obvious or not. Surprisingly, doesn't get the doesn't really do anything through that hairpin. A bit of contact there. All right, and, and I mean normally I could almost say that you could just blame that on the car being out of control But it's Alice in Chains we're talking about here, and she's out of control again Runs into Stephanie for good measure Stephanie's so gonna try and actually race and make contact Porsche, you better run for your- oh! Oh god! See you later! Oh my word. Into the wall. Another one. Yep. All the way to the sand trap for Thrasher. Alright, so that's one, two, three, four, four and a half, five, six. Six crashes caused by Allison Chains in this one race, but nothing to be done about it. We don't have a penalty system involved. There is no such system in place because we didn't expect to deal with somebody this this just insufferable. I'm glad I'm in a di completely different category. I would not want to be anywhere near the same track as this piece of human debris. You know, she would easily have won the race if she was more focused on actually doing that instead of focused on wrecking every Mustang in her way. She's gonna pass Akatsumi relatively normally. It's going to be a victory for Colin Morris here at Fuji. But honestly, I feel like he's sort of been overshadowed at this point by the actions of a particular Dodge Challenger driver. The camera was never even on him. Why are the lights going off? Hello? Um, anyway, so yeah, that'll... That's, that's race two. I don't... I don't know what we're gonna do about this, folks. Like... When I say folks, like... We, folks. You, you aren't gonna do a darn thing. But this is all on the Challenge Series drivers. And, I don't know if Gina's office doors are even open at this point. I guess I don't have any personal stake in it. 
I haven't even been in the same race as her yet. Praise the heavens. I am agnostic, but still. It, it, there's no penalty system. There, there has never been anything like that. It's just been a gentleman's agreement that everyone follows the rules of the series and everyone races the way that they want to be raced. And the times where that hasn't happened, they've made their presence known more often than not. So it's kind of evened out and all that. And so in this search, in this case where this person's clearly a menace to society in pretty much all ways except literal, we don't really have a system in place. And is this a freak thing or God forbid I hope that people don't just see what this one person's doing and be like, okay, well if they're allowed to do it, then I'm gonna do it next. And I, I feel like why is that thing in E Derb? What the heck? <laughs> um You know, I just hope that it's not the one bad apple that corrupts like half the series and suddenly we have we have this host invitationals for that, you know? Anyway, on to race three, where hopefully there are going to be considerably less crashing. There are less crashing. Yep, that perfect English. Oh, it's raining, it's pouring, and Thomas O'Reilly's probably snoring. Uh, we're here at high speed ring for the third race, and it is what the forecast said expected to be light showers. Do you call this a light shower? Because I certainly do not. And we're gonna see the, uh, we're gonna have a first hand look at the first of the three redesigned vehicles here. Maki's, uh, redesigned Gran Turismo, which kind of looks like it'd be an Iron Man car, but I like the gold touch. Apparently it was inspired by the subunit logo that she was a part of. I don't know much about what that means, but from what I understand it's like a division of a bigger group. pretending like I don't know what level I is or anything about it when I that obviously if I didn't to know they wouldn't be here um, actually no just forget the just fourth wall destroyer uh, the tunnels are the only place where you're gonna get any grip right now as you can see the moisture measurement thing down there this is about 50% track moisture um, all right, we have taken the NASCAR line, and Maki is going very fast down the main straightaway. At the moment, Schwartz is working on checking out. Oh, good lord. Alright. I was hoping there wouldn't be any crashing, but... Uh, nope. Dunzi has just taken the, the redesigned Maserati back to the junkyard. Yeah, no. Uh... That... That looks pretty bad. Oh no, the crash is not over. Oh my word, Malsan just got ping-ponged. Hi, Natsuki. Let's actually see this from Malsan's POV. This is like one of the biggest crashes we've ever had. And Allison's not even in this race. There's Maki up ahead, spinning across the track. She tries to go for the gap on the inside of the circuit, but misjudges and gets absolutely ping-ponged. Spectacularly, the car still works and she's able to continue the race. She also tags Gemini, trying to get her car reoriented. Time to bring out the safety car, am I right? Goodness me! Yeah, I know, the, the gold trim is inspired by the BB's, the subunit that she was a part of when Muse was still active. 
She was in it with uh, Ellie and Nico. And their logo was obnoxiously gold. Oh, God. But as you hold on to your food stamps, I don't think she's happy. She chooses peace. Well, I guess they can't all be assertive. Maki elects to let Fidanzi go for that. And now she's in the lead. Maybe this is one of those rare cases in the challenge series where somebody, instead of taking revenge, you know, focuses on winning the race. Clearly her car is not too damaged. Yeah, I think, I think Fidanzi uh, needs to keep this in mind for later. I just think she's on comfort tires. There's a few of them on those, on those tires. Da -da -da. And as you can see, uh, the majority of them aren't doing too well. Sports tires are clearly better right now. Cadenzi and Parker are the only ones really holding their own on the comfort tires, and a part of that for for uh, Mr. Parker is probably just due to the fact that he's at least got four-wheel drive traction, if nothing else. But. We're gonna see the difference here because Koskinen is, is basically the same car, just a model year newer. And maybe passing him pretty soon here. <laughs> this doesn't seem like the ideal race for a car like this at all. <laughs> This thing's got so much horsepower, I feel like that's probably a pain to control. Um... R4 race car, I guess. Let's not give myself a stroke trying to say the code name. He's all over the back of that TVR, and now it, ha it has a run on it. All-wheel drive, probably helping, plus electric, so elect acceleration. And slight about a slight amount of door banging, but into the lead for the robot. Or not into the lead, into the second place for the robot. The second place, oh my god, right here. Heading through and out of the last turn, ever so steadily, uh, Maki has weathered both. Maki has weathered both the terrible weather, literally pun not intended, and a little bit of bumper from a Testarossa driver, and still wins that high-speed ring. I don't know how you even keep a thing on the road, Bradley Hunter, but I guess good on you. I certainly don't think I'd be able to do much with that thing here. This looks like pack racing, unless your name is Gemini or Melsan or June Summers, who is on definitely the wrong compound of tires. And, uh, yeah. There was less crashing, I guess, but I don't think it would have been possible to have more crashing. Not with the length of this race. We still had one very big accident, but... You know, at least it wasn't caused intentionally. I think it was just... Ferdanzi probably thinking she had better grip. In, you know, very not dry conditions. And I wonder if maybe Maki figured that and didn't hold anything against her. Or maybe if... Because Maki's not... She's definitely not a submissive person. I know this for a fact. She's... 
arguably just as aggressive of a personality, or can be just as aggressive of a personality as anybody else on Muses. And we're seeing even Kotori dish out payback maneuvers, so there's no way that Maki wouldn't be willing to herself. So that's probably just a thing of being cognizant of the fact that these conditions were not pretty. And also cognizant of the fact that I can wreck you or I can go around you and take the lead by the end of the next straightaway. So that looks weird. Uh, on to the next race then. And hopefully with this time considerably less rain. For the fourth race of the episode, we have the uh, the episode's 7.30 race, 7.30 category race, and the camera is on James Stillwell, the second of the redesigned cars. And, uh, gotta say, definitely a huge improvement. This thing looks like a legitimate race car this time around, instead of just being something that it looks like he just kind of threw together last second. Mind you, I think given his circumstances, he probably did throw it together last second. But... Now it looks like a... It kind of looks like a real race car, honestly. Already up a couple places on, uh... Thomas O'Reilly looking for another on Vert. What doesn't look too good, though, is it's braking as he shoves Brian Ice off the circuit and makes the move that way. I'm sure Ice is getting a bit of flashbacks at the moment. Around the outside, he's thinking, yes. It's now that the inside. Honica is trying to also go on the outside, but it will not work. Bit of nudge under Frisco. Seemed to unsettle him a little bit, though. Even though it wasn't much contact. And down the inside, small tap on the 911 GT1 up ahead. Aeroport's not doing him too many favors here at the moment. Kogasa just plants us up in the middle of the track and Stillwell's completely caught off guard. Oh no. Missed! Now there's no penalty for that, but you know. I don't think he actually gained a whole lot there. Attempt number two. Still can't get on the brakes late enough. Is no, I'm being forced off the track by Eric up ahead. Good exit there, and that's the pass on one Viper, and now he's gonna try and get around the other one. And uh, I, I'm I was not aware he was there. I was so focused on trying to figure out how to get around Eric, I didn't notice that there was something in my blind spot. Probably because it's in my blind spot, but you know. Details, who needs them? Oh, that's not really cars with James, thank you. Hansen is told we uh, botched the final turn. Stillwell takes advantage, outdrags Scarborough, squeezes ahead of Parker, and another overtake for good measure on the MP412C. Adjusts his breaking point accordingly, and this time he does actually get it stopped. But man, that's really early on the brakes compared to what I imagine everybody else is able to do. Which well, we won't know because the field is actually really tight and it was all into the first corner before I could get down there. I thought Alice Carson was way ahead. No, no she's not. Actually, Barbara's right there and so is Cam and soon so too will be James. 
Oh. Four wheel drive isn't perfect. You still sometimes have to drive like a sane person. Oh. A little more of a nudge. Nothing egregious, just Stibble's using some NASCAR overtake maneuvers, and it's like, you know. He'd be mad, but at least he's not trying to hurt people, unlike somebody else. I, somebody has to do something about her. I probably save my ranting until when we're not in the middle of the race. Uh, four wheel drive moment? Four wheel drive moment. And a lot of horsepower moment. Alice Carson's on the low end of power in this category. Still out clearly is not. And so he is in the lead. And now two laps remain. Probably not forget there are other cars on the track. As Barbara follows James through, bit of uh, fender contact, but ultimately again nothing really too uh, too major. Hanson looking for a pass has been forced offline by Gandhi though, and for a second I thought Jake was going to cut back at him. Uh, actually, he just might. No, Gandhi chose the wrong lane. If Ganyu had blocked Wayne, he would have as easily had the pair of them. Now he's being passed by me. We got some, like, NASCAR... Oh god, there's more. This is NASCAR pack racing, but at Brazil. Or Interlagos, Brazil. You are going to Brazil! Um... I don't know. <laughs> Looks like the pack racing has finally ended, and Scarborough has definitely exited the loser in it. Still can't find a way around the original McLaren. Finally, Jake makes that move. Now that he's lost three or four places, really. I think he only lost one to me, but he lost a chance at like four. Now this little train is caught up with Parker. Yeah, they were able to break considerably later. Hanted on the inside, uses Parker up like a dish towel. And the move is official. I shall try to follow the Lamborghini through. Superior horsepower, later braking. That's certainly what happened in ARC too often. I have not passed any parker, I've just been absolutely embarrassed. And now I'm gonna get passed by Eric as well for my attempts at passing. This is not the law of equivalent exchange. Top four, pretty single file. Given more time, I'm sure Hanson would probably be catching Cam and Alice, but he doesn't have more time. He's only got about a sector of race to go. Well, those zero parts really didn't help Travis Wild here. I guess there's not many downforce corners here. There's still moves being made. This race probably could have been a six lap race. The field hadn't completed shuffling around yet. Uh, another redesigned victory. James Stillwell grabs the W at Interlagos. And Cam could have probably had that move done into one if we had another lap, but he will instead have to settle for P4. Apparently Jakey was on the way around me later on. A nice, uh... A nice calm affair after the last two races were very frenetic, uh, putting it kind of lightly, honestly. I'm going to definitely have to speak with Gina after this, uh, after the, uh, following weeks. After the following weeks races and make sure, you know, 
Make my opinions known because I kind of like the drivers in the series. I'd rather them not get killed because somebody wants to be a smartass and never break in the zone. But oh, we don't have a penalty system. If you're here, it's because you deserve to be here. I don't kiss my foot, Gina. You just say that because he hasn't wrecked you yet. She. Give it time. She doesn't do so about it. I might have to myself. I don't wanna. So just turn me into a hypocrite, but... You know, if I gotta wreck one person to prevent, like, 30 more from being wrecked, I've got enough horsepower. <laughs> I've got all 710 of it, I think. How much is in my car again? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Next race. We're here for the start of the potluck event, and can I just point out that with all of those headlights, how much the truck sticks out in this picture? All these other cars with different colored headlights, but then we just have this wise guy with just like all of the headlights. Yeah, it's the potluck race. We are at uh, Tokyo South. The Tokyo South Loop, I should say. The camera car is Akira Taniguchi with his uh, upgraded wide body kit. Apparently, now the base model is not just a regular Supra, now it's a TRD 3000 GT. Based on the emblem on the back of the car. As you can see it there. <clears throat> He's already up three places. One turn. Quite a few drivers in this race that are more than familiar with the expressway. The potluck has, has uh, rolled a winner here, I would say. Uh oh. Nudge slams into Mishima. Gets a bit of Jansen for good measure. I don't think Drake would like that. Gives Akira a bit of a piece of her mind, but the uh, a lot of a lot of horsepower means that Akira doesn't really need to care. Interesting class split here in this potluck race. There are three 730 cars: Jansen, Macintosh, and the leader Hanoka. And then there's a singular 600 car in the form of Risei's uh, 208. Everything else is 640 or 675. And you can already see Honoka is taking full advantage. I believe she started third or fourth, which is already in the lead, and the lead is only getting bigger. But yeah, all the top four here, I would say, have pretty suffice experience on the expressway. Pretty much a, a home away from a home for uh, for Gemini. Uh, I do believe Tyler's driven here plenty of times. Obviously, Akira knows his place like the back of his hand. Katano, I'm sure, has raced here a few times. Mishima lives in Tokyo, so she probably knows the road. I don't know how often she races on them, but she knows them. Valentine knows them relatively well, and Kotori has home track advantage. Gina doesn't really... I don't think she does that. I think she more stayed on the mountain roads. And Rise also lives in Japan, so maybe she knows the roads, but probably doesn't race them. Seems like we can get back through the field and, uh, and catch back up with our POV car of Akira, who's currently in quite a pack. Alright. Taniguchi will create his own lane. The truck just gets embarrassed down the front straightaway. Down the inside of the Superbird for the Supra. Superbird. That would be weird. Uh, let's not dwell on that too much. And there's the move done. Jansen, an absolute mess of traction, heading through the cargo bay area. Macintosh does not have time for this, but he's having to make it. Bit of a nudge on Schwartz, who kind of changed lanes there. Just squeezes through on the TBR. Supra versus Supra. 
and Gemini backs out, then wanting absolutely no part of that. Kiro and now chase down his buddy Thrasher up ahead. Schwartz had the better exit from the hairpin, but he doesn't have enough horsepower to stay there. Or stay with the Super, I should say. <clears throat> okay. Akira was very obviously not ready for that brake check. I don't think I'd have been either. Uh, down the inside of the last turn. And there's the move. Now it is just uh, Stephanie and Hono cut a go. Even if one of them is sort of in the next category, we have certainly seen weirder things. Now uh, he does the funny with the headlights. Aren't you supposed to do that before you try to pass them? Akira, what kind of a highway racer are you? And, uh, no. Honoka's... She may have established an utter dominance in her other NSX here at the Expressway last episode, but, uh, trust me, that's about to be challenged. Considerably. See, about here, Akira, I'm pretty sure, is when you're supposed to flash the high beams. Considering the distance between these two and third place, this is honestly about to look like Tokyo Extreme Racer here for the lead. Thrasher actually passes Stephanie through the hairpin. Uh, based on my calculations, that's about 10 seconds behind. We're gonna have a sort of battle through the S's, but I don't think Akira's gonna find a way around here. And being a category above, the NSX is gonna have better horsepower, too. He's kinda staying with her, but not much. He's going defensive into T1. Akira... Actually, kind of ran a little wide. Maybe focus on exit speed. Defensive again is the NSX. Oh no. You ain't getting that stopped. Another. Oh boy. The car still works. So it's not another DNF for her yet. She still has some semblance of just a fragment of hope. I can't tell if that's pushing the car to catch back up or anger that just caused her to slide through there, but that looked awfully fancy. Yeah, still second by a pretty hefty margin, no less. The hell? Did he wait? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't tell if that's sportsmanship or ego, but... Akira wants to do this the right way, clearly. He did the headlight thing and everything. No, he just, he just straight up waited, yeah. You can kind of see a bit of confusion. Yeah, you can you can barely see the headlight thing. <laughs> He's finally done it right. He's done it before making the overtake. Now he actually has to get up there and, you know, make the overtake. But 
have a wall tab, but hopefully it doesn't matter. Not that way. Because it's gonna it's gonna come down to the final lap here, and uh, I don't know what to think here. We've had a really bizarre mixture. We've had absolute dastardly driving from Allison, but now we have the sportsmanship of literally waiting for the person in second to pass you. Because you want to pass them the right way and not pass them from an error. I don't know. Is that... I, I can't tell. Is that sportsmanship or is that just playing with your food? I don't know. There's some sort of, like, highway racer code that I'm not aware of. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask. I don't know if I'll ask Akira or Thrasher. I don't know who's actually going to give me a straight answer. But it's interesting. Let's see, does uh, does Onoka adjust her breaking point this time? Let's hope so. Because it'd be embarrassing for him to wait for her and then she mess up again. Uh, she missed, but at least she made the corner. pushing herself again. That's kind of scary. So what happened the last time she was doing that. Defensive into this corner, but... Akira's not even in the neighborhood at the moment. I don't really see the point. Still plenty of distance. The second fastest car on the race has finally made it to third place, but I think it's too little too late. We're only going to have a few corners to go here. All little drive is going to help Honoka out of this hairpin. Of course, just, you know, having more horsepower also helps. Yeah, they're holding a hundred through the S's, oh my word. Last turn. Better exit Akira, better car, Honoka. Oh, this is gonna be something. A Honoka by a bumper, oh my word. Well, to any TXR fans in the, uh, in the fans, in the stand, well. To any TXR fans in the stands, are you not entertained? My god. Alright, well, that's quite a quite an intense end to the episode. Time to go win an outrun race against a womanizer or something. I don't know. Mess around, maybe find the rolling guys. I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, next episode. Maybe, hopefully by then, somebody will have given chain to talking to. I'm not holding my breath, because Gina seems adamant against it. Nitori doesn't seem to want to open the conversation. And so it's like one negative, one positive, one neutral. So we're not getting anywhere here on the uh, sort of administrative council of the challenge series. I don't think martial law is the way we need to take things, Gina, but I know you're hearing this, 